We obviously have seen a litany of enforcement actions coming from the SEC. Is there any sense that Gary Gensler will slow down on this? And what do you think he could target next? Well, thank you for having me. Um, no, I think Gary has a very well laid out agenda and people who aren't listening to him uh, are going to probably regret that. The fact of the matter is, uh, Gary said just died a couple of days ago that he's had dozens of meetings with people. He lays out the, he lays out the rules for people and then they go out and they basically give lip service to them. They actually said that in one of their enforcement complaints uh, about a week ago against one of the exchanges. And there's no reason to do that. The rules are very clear, despite what everybody says. The rules have been on the books forever. Most of them emanate from a 1946 Supreme Court case. Uh, that thing's been right. on the books for years. Everybody knows what it says. Yeah, so you're referring, of course, to the Howey test, and we're also talking about securities law that is from the 1930s. I mean, these are decades and decades uh, old, to your point, and yet we're talking about digital assets that are relatively more new. So I'm just wondering why you think these cases are winnable for the SEC, that the definition of securities is going to be found to still apply. Well, I, I think these cases are very winnable. They're really very cut and dry. The Howey rules are very simple. You take your, you take people's money, you pool it someplace, you promise them profits from the pooling process, and you give it back. It's a security. People who've been working in this space for years know this, and most of some of the bigger platforms now are actually just coming out and they're telling people, yes, we're really doing that, we're really doing that, except they're not. Crypto wants to be treated differently. I don't know why they should. It's it's a different kind of a security, but securities laws have been designed for decades to cover whatever variations come out. Every time you every time you do a variation on one of these things, you don't want to pass a whole new statute. And that's what they want. They want something that's different for them. And the problem, I, I think the problem that, that uh, Gensler's addressing, and I think he's right, is if you change, if you what they want to do is change it so that they give out less information, you get less investor protection, and the consumers who are trusting their money to these people for because they think it's new, because they think it's sexy, because of whatever they think, uh, don't necessarily get the full picture of what they're doing. And if they don't, then they're not making good judgments. And that's what the securities laws are about. They're about protecting those kinds of investments. Tom, so to me, a lot of these coins seem more like commodities than securities. Certainly that's the case with Bitcoin, right? And the SEC continually denies uh, Bitcoin ETF. Why do you think that is? Well, the, the coins actually, the coins in and of themselves actually are uh, commodities and they are regulated both, mostly for fraud. Uh, by the CFTC. But once you go beyond just the coin itself and you really create what becomes a security using the test that I talked about before, you're in a different realm. And once you get into that different realm, you've got different obligations. And that's the difference. If the, if the uh, uh, crypto people want to just stay away from the SEC, they can take coins, they can sell the coins as long as they don't securitize them. And they know the difference between a securitized coin and a non-securitized coin. It's just not that difficult to figure out. All right. But uh, in the case of Bitcoin, even Gensler himself has said it's not a security. And um, w it's a commodity. Uh, we have a lot of ETFs that are made up of commodities. You know, we trade Bitcoin back and forth all day long. It would be nice to have that wrapper on it. Why do you think they're uh, resistant? Or do you think that BlackRock will be successful in getting through its application to um, create a Bitcoin ETF? I think if somebody has a chance of maybe BlackRock, they have a very sophisticated practice. The problem in the past, and there are letters that have been issued by the, the various divisions of the staff of the SEC, is the volatility is such that, they're, that they have a real concern about settling these things at the end of the day, because a lot of them are set up so that they settle each day and you got to mark them to the market. If, in fact, they're they're too volatile to do that, then you can't really do that. But if uh, if the uh, product that BlackRock is putting out um, can contain that volatility such that you can settle these things up every day, decide what the NAV is so that investors know what the value of their, their uh, coins are, then they, then they might have a shot to get through. If they do, they'll be the first one, but they're going to have to solve that problem.